control the game. And A cloudy day here at Archbishop Curley High School as the Concordia Prep Saints visit the Archbishop Curley Friars. Welcome, folks. I'm Nick Polinski alongside A.J. Polcari. Both teams headed into their second conference game. The Friars starting off with a win against Boys Latin and Concordia starting out with a win against St. Paul. Both teams dominated their conference opener. A.J., what do you have for this Curley team today? Uh, I mean, it's simply got to be the passing game. I mean, you know Concordia is ready for Karan Madison at the running back position, as well as they have one of the best rush defenses in the state. They stack the box, as we know. Uh, so the passing defense, spreading out the defense, is going to be a major uh, play in this game. Bailey and Boots, Elijah Anderson, Chris Pond, and Isaiah Yates, your captains for the Friars today. It's a big game today, and really it's been a growing rivalry over the past few years. Concordia has been a competitive team in this conference really since we've been here and it's always been a good matchup with the Friars. Although they're coming in stronger this year with the Friars looking to improve the 2-0 and which would give them a big head start in this conference. I mean truly you don't expect to say in the second conference game of the season but this very well could determine first and second place in the playoff implications in this game right now. I mean Concordia and Curly two that are predicted to be the top teams in the MIAA and they both also had great first games. Rematch of the semifinal last year where Concordia just edged out Curly in the uh, MIA playoffs. Absolutely. This Curly team, like you said, they're going to get the ball to Karan Madison. We'll see how Concordia responds. Moments away from kickoff. We've seen the intensity brewing in the school this week for this game. There are people excited about this game. Big one for the Friars. Looking to start off 2-0 as our Concordia. Coach Womack headed into his second conference game. Class of 2011 played his four years here for varsity football with the Friars. Now he's done a great job with these guys, getting them prepared. They came out strong. 30-point performance against Boys Latin in their first conference game. Friars will kick it away to start. The all MIAA pond will tee it up from the 40 yard line. High anticipation for this one. Pond will jog up and boot this one away. Fielded at the 10 yard line. Jalen Harcum to the left side and down at about the 20 yard line. That's where the Concordia Prep Saints will open up their first offensive possession. It'll be Keyshawn Mister listed as an athlete on our depth chart. He'll start in the pistol. Harkham right behind him. Actually Cornish rather. He'll pick up about five yards. Julius Cornish on the carry the senior. Second and five, 25 yard line. Mr. lines up with Cornish right to his right. He's gonna sprint out right. He's gonna throw to the flat and called as a catch for a first down. That was close to the ground there. Curly calling for it on the sideline is hit the ground, but no. Honestly, I thought from up here, thought it may have skipped in, but apparently not. 
Fresh set of downs for the Saints at the 36 yard line. They're calling offsides on Bailey and Boots. A free five for the Saints. So much more manageable first and five. Keyshawn Mister, the senior in the pistol. Fellow senior Cornish right behind him. They'll give it to Cornish off the right side. Skips past the 45-yard line, just shy of midfield. He's got the first down. We'll see how this curly front seven plays in front of a good Concordia offensive line. It's going to be an important matchup to watch today. See how the Friars stop the run game. Mister takes the snap. He's going to keep it to the left side. He's going to roll. He's got some room past midfield, past the 40. Still green in front of him, and he's taken down all the way down past the 30-yard line by Isaiah Yates. Just a collapse in the cup in the defense there. I mean, just scrambles out of there and just takes all 30 yards on that run. You can see why they call Mister an athlete on the depth chart. Sprung out of the pocket there. Picked up a good chunk for a new set of downs down to the 28 yard line of the Friars. Harkham in motion. He'll line up split far out to the left. Taking the snap up the middle with some room and with the 30 yard line, he's got about eight yards. Kevin Montag on the carry. So it'll be a second and short lined up just inside the red zone, right on that 20-yard line. Mister once again lines up in the pistol. He'll give. He's got the first down, it looks like. Once again, Montag on the carry. First down from the 18 yard line. Keyshawn Mister in the shotgun. Kevin Montag will move from his right to his left. Two receivers split out to the left side. Darian Hill and Jalen Harkham. When first and ten, they'll give it straight up the middle. And he's swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. In there was Tavon Anthony. Otherwise known as Turk. Turk finally, somebody finally gets into the backfield and stops the run. See if that creates a momentum for this defense. The uh, pass rush and run stopping defense that looked so strong last week against Boyce Latin. Out here punching them out the first drive. Mister, he's going to drop back and roll right. Converging is Yates, and he'll throw it out of bounds. It'll be third down. And it looks like a face mask will be called, rather, a hold on the offense. We'll see what Curly does with the penalty. Whether honestly, they'll. I would honestly decline it. I think I'd agree with you. You have a stop. They're, thir they're already third and long. If you miss it, why make it second and long and have a chance at a big run, which they've done twice already this game? They're going to accept it. Move back them 10. So now set up with a second and 21. 
Keyshawn Mister in the empty set. Four split out to the right, one to the left. Mister is going to drop back. He's going to look look one on one to the left, and he's going to throw complete and out of bounds in the 21-yard line. Darian Hill. So it does work out in the end, rather than the third and 11. Concordia now faced with a third and about 15. Not can't can't tell you how good uh, Concordia's kicker is. Never seen it. Uh, this is definitely in Chris Pond's range. Now is this in their kicker's range? Similar formation we'll for Mister. He's going to roll out right. He's going to chuck it to the end zone, out of the back of the end zone, and incomplete. So Curly will force most likely a field goal attempt. Although Keyshawn Mister still out there for now. No motion on that Concordia sideline. Terrific coverage there by Elijah Anderson and Amari Gardner. Combined to stop that nowhere for Mr. to throw the ball. He just chucks it away. Now they'll bring out the field goal unit. Ryder Bentz, both the place kicker and the punter, similar to Pond. 39 yard kick. Snap is low and bobbled. Bentz is not going to get it there. So the Curly defense stands strong. Don't allow a single point on that first drive, and they'll take over at their own 29-yard line. Huge gift there from the Concordia long snapper. Could have I'm surprised they, after the fumble run, they still tried to put it down and kick it, not try to tuck it away and see if you can get some kind of junk play that might break out. Instead, tried to still kick it. Luckily, it wasn't blocked. Uh, but now Curly will get it at their 20 yard line giving up no points, it's terrific and Scott Anderson comes out of QB, was unsure of who was going to be the QB today actually a correction on my part ball will be at the 20 yard line which was where the ball was spotted rather than back at the 29 where the ball was held, although I'm pretty sure that's how they do it in the NFL so it'll be Anderson with Karan Madison the all MIAA running back to his left he takes a snap. It's going to be a screen pass to the right side. Blown up for a loss of about three yards. Not the ideal start. Looked like Malachi Nichols on the reception. He loses three. Anderson with the man to each side. Nichols to his left, Madison to his right. They'll give it to Madison. He'll cut back up the middle. Minimal gain. Nearly back to the original line of scrimmage. They'll give him two yards. It'll be third and 11. <laughs> Just about halfway through this first quarter. Typical fall day, clouds in the sky. Not too chilly, however. Some good football weather, by my definition. Third and 11, Anderson's gonna drop back. He's gonna look to the left side, now roll that way. A lead block by Madison out in front. Anderson's gonna scramble, and he's gonna get past the 25 yard line and set up a fourth and four. And Chris Pond will come out to punt it away. This Concordia pass rush showing why they are so good. Got in there and also stuffed the run as well. This front seven for Concordia is terrific. Darian Hill will be back deep for the punt return. Oh, Pond! Oh, it got tipped. And it's going to be downed at the 45 yard line of the Friars. I thought for a moment they ran into the kicker and didn't get a hand on the ball, but they did. Now Concordia gets the ball on their good side of the field. We've seen the Curly special teams unit have some trouble with blocking assignments. That was actually rather interesting as Justin Harvey came flying in from about the 40 yard line. Timed it perfectly. He may, I, he may not have been the one to get a hand on it, but 
he was definitely in there. I saw him go through just about unblocked. <coughs> Everybody's pointing down toward, which way is that? South, south end zone, right? That's north, that's south. Yes. Uh, here comes McGinty now, riding away on his cart. I don't think that has anything to do with it, but... I don't know what's going on here. But it's first and ten for the Saints from the Friars 45-yard line. Best starting field position in the two drives for Concordia. Mister's going to look left. Yates nearly got a hand on it. Couldn't. Caught by Darian Hill down before the 25-yard line at the 27. That patch just over the outstretched arm of Isaiah Yates dropped back into coverage. Mister will line up in the pistol. He'll take this snap and give it up the middle, swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. Zion Harris coming through, making the tackle. He's Lost gonna lose two, about two yards. Ball spotted back at the 30. Line to gain the 18 of the Friars. Second and 12. This Curly defense is going to need to play a big part if they want to keep the Friars in this game. This Concordia offense is very good. They beat Gilman, who the Friars lost to 13 0, beat them 28 0. Mister is going to roll that fake the pitch. A dangerous shovel up the middle, although by design. They get the ball to Destin Mitchell, the sophomore tight end. Gain of four. Interesting play there. Play call there. You see that a lot by the Kansas City Chiefs. They'll fake that shovel outside and pitch it to Kelsey in the middle of the field as there is a, one of these invasive bugs directly on my Concordia roster. Please go away. He is gone. You know, I see, I see those bugs all around here. All around. And I never see them anywhere near my house. They infest the campus. Apparently. I always wonder, like, because they weren't, they weren't here until, like, maybe two years ago. Like, at all. Two, I think they're an invasive species. That's why you're supposed to kill them. How do they get here? What? They like just sneak on a plane in some airport in China or something because they're Asian originated bugs. So, somebody carry one over here? I don't know. Whoever they are deserves some very harsh punishment because they're rather annoying. Especially last year, it was even worse. Last summer. Third and eight. Mister, he'll take the snap. He'll keep it on the read option, and he's looks like got the first down, and he does. Keyshawn Mister just sprung right out of that zone read, kept it himself to a vacant right side. Gets a solid chunk on third down for a fresh set of downs. Very quick on his feet. I mean, immediately just hit the hole and took off. Curly had hardly any time to react. We'll see if that's something the Friars take note of as they go on to keep a man outside ready for that, to read that zone read. We're going to get a flag from the far side in the midst of that run. Such a good run, and it might be called back for something that happened right at the end of the play. Unnecessary. No, it's on Curly as a face mask. A lot of the time that's what you'll see when that late flag comes in with that pile. Everybody just grabbing, trying to get a hold of the runner and you just grab a hold in the wrong place. It'll be half the distance to the goal from the end of that play. <coughs> Clock stopped at 2.55 in this first quarter. 
the Saints were first with the ball. Uh, missed field goal after a bobble snap. Friars went three and out. This one will be a direct snap. Fumbled. Back to the 12-yard line, and he'll be touched down there. Saints lucky to fall right on it. Didn't get too far away from him. They'll bring Keyshawn Mister back in. Second and goal now from about the 11 yard line. Cornish to Mister's right. He's gonna throw to the end zone. Nearly picked off by Malachi Nichols. Good Great. coverage. Great defense by Nichols there. Almost got the interception, hit him right in the head. But terrific defense is third down. Surprised Concordia has gone, tried to go ahead past. With how well they've been able to run the football, this drive especially, but also on the first drive. Those hitch routes are those number one routes you see. Most of the pick sixes come from. Cornerback I mean, just beats the receiver back the ball, and he's got green in front of him. If Nichols was a half a second earlier, he takes that all the way back to the house for a 90-yard interception return. Oh, third down, Mister's going to keep it to the left side. Swarmed by the Friars and taken down at the line of scrimmage. I don't think Mister was attempting to run that football into the bad snap yet again from the Concordia center. He's done it twice on offense and once. Not sure if he's the same long snapper, but also a bad snap on the kick on the field goal. <laughs> Officials timeout. Confusion from the curly coaches up here at the top thing about who's running the clock. I think it's that guy over to our left. He is. He is the guy running the clock with the big scoreboard thing. You know, I used to love running those at my older brother's uh, baseball games. Done it a few times day. for some. Wreck basketball. It's a stressful time. Stressful it time is. running that clock. Those, those wreck basketball pants will yell at you. Oh, yeah. If you don't start that clock as soon as that inbound hits in the last minute, you're going to get chewed out. It's a tough job. So, Concordia with an interesting decision here. They're going to go for it, or at least line up to do so from the 11 yard line. Actually, now farther back with that loss by Keyshawn Mister at about the 12 or 13. True surprise. Curl looks a little bit off balance here. Tripped maybe, right. Maybe, maybe a timeout here from the defense. They're no. showing blitz and they bring it. Mister's going to roll to the right. Looking back over the middle. Picked off. Intercepted. It's Galil Travers. His second in as many games in conference. And the Flyers stand tall once again. backs against the wall for the second time for this curly defense and they stop him again. I mean Travers read that like a book. I mean the rollout can do that to you. I mean you limited space to throw the football and Travers finds out exactly where Mister was trying to go. And when you're rolling out you don't see those guys in that zone coverage off to the right. They can just lurk right back across the middle and read the eyes and that's exactly what Travers did there. They're going to give this one to Madison. A minimal gain on first of about a yard or two. We'll see how this Friars offense responds to their defense with a big stand once again. Hoping to get out of the shadow of their own end zone. Anderson with Karan Madison to his left. The Saints are showing blitz. We'll see if they bring it. They will. They'll give it to Madison on the counter. Tries to break through but can't. No gain on that one. Third and about eight. It was Cam Gross in on the stop. Like I said, this Concordia rush defense very strong. Curve's got to find a way to air this ball out. The receiver's got to get open. 
Of course, this defensive line anchored by Ernest Willer on the edge. He's got a grocery list of Division I offers, Alabama, Maryland, Penn State. If you name it, he's probably got it. Also an interesting fact, I was in his seventh grade world, mu world music class. Really? I was. Very good guy, as well as a very good football player. Michael Brown in motion. They'll give the Madison up the middle. Conservative on third down. And they'll get about three, three yards. Surprised with the play call there. I mean, you are back against the end zone, so you got to. But there's another chance now. You're going to give Cordy the ball on your side of 50 again. Quarter will run out, so the Friars will punt it away from the opposite side of the field. Clock at triple zeros. And it'll be the end of the first quarter. Each team with two offensive possessions so far. Concordia moving in much better than the Friars, but they have not been able co to convert in the red zone. The Friars, three and out the first time, three and out the second time. So it'll be interesting to see how each team adjusts. Pond will quickly flip sides of the field. Pond will stand right on his own goal line. If the Friars can't pick up this special teams rush from the Saints. It could spell trouble as the Friars are right back by their own end zone. Andre Dotson back for the return, staying right at the 50 yard line. Right in the middle of the AC shield. Pond with his heels just before his own goal line. Snap is clean. Pond gets it away. It's a good punt. It'll chase Dotson back. He fumbles it all the way back to the 30 yard line where he will begin. Malachi Nichols with great special teams coverage. So the Friars special teams unit does their job. The Saints will start all the way back at the 34 yard line for Pond. Net 65 yard punt. Just about. I was about to do the math in my head, but you had it already ready to go. But pretty quick with it. Sometimes. No on the mic switches today. You get two uninter uninterrupted hours of me, Nick Polinski, with AJ Polcari. How lucky of you. Keyshawn Mister in the shotgun. Ball spotted on the 34 yard line of Concordia. Snap is high. Hands it off for no gain as the Friars defense in there once again. So far they've bent but they haven't broke. We'll see if that trend continues. Mister will line up in the pistol. Two split out to the left, one on the far side. He'll take the snap. Pressure coming. Mister holds onto the ball for entirely too long and taken down by Isaiah Yates. A really poor football play by Keyshawn Mister. I mean, he was looking downfield the entire time, looking for somebody who's out there. He's walking back to the line now. That is the senior wide receiver, Darian Hill. He was looking for him, trying to get open, held on to it, and didn't scramble like he's been having success doing out the entire game so far. That wasn't blindside either. Isaiah Yates saw him coming right at him. Exactly. Mister is going to roll right, try and set up the screen back left. Intercepted! Malachi Nichols! Swoops up the overthrow on the screen pass and the Friars set up in prime field position. 
Mister just floats that one up there trying to get anything as another pass rush coming. Trying to get it off to his senior running back, Kevin Montong. And he throws it over and Malachi is there, snag it away. Curl's gonna get the ball on the 25 yard line almost. An acrobatic dive for the senior Nichols. And he secures that one. Anderson will start in the pistol. Karan Madison right behind him, they'll give it to him. He's gonna charge up the middle and he's gonna get a good extra push and gain about six yards. <coughs> Why did they change this move? Oh, they just weren't set. Okay, okay. Anderson, Anderson in the offense got out there quick and snapped it. I mean, I was still looking down, still looking down at my stat sheet. They, they did indeed. And the ball was snapped. A gain of four, was it? A gain of five. So yeah, more like five or six. Set about the second and five. Another give to Madison. He is stonewalled, but a push gets him just about back to line of scrimmage. So no loss, but no gain. And it's third and five. I think this is probably once again a run situation. I would, I would, I would see it with a run, bringing in Jack Cool. Oh no, bringing them out. Maybe getting a little bit, a little bit quicker. If you get within three, you probably have four down territory in your hand. So we'll see if Karan Madison can get about halfway. He's right behind Anderson, lined up in the pistol. They'll play action, fake it, and a zing this one into the end zone, Jack Athis. Anderson with a quick hitter. The entire world thinks that one's going to Karan Madison. And instead, it's Jack Athis as the Friars strike first. Great play action fake there. Like you said, everybody thought he was going to Madison. Clear run situation. And the offense pulls out the play action pass. Athis takes it all the way home. And I'll tell you. Anderson put some zing on that one. Right in between two defenders, Athis just had the shaken arm tackle. Just green in front of him. Pond will line up for the extra point. Rice's hold is down. Pond's kick is good. So the Friars start off the scoring. It's 7-0 after Jack Athens' score. And a big one at that. Scott Anderson's first passing touchdown in conference. He has looked good in replacement of Adam Cook. And honestly, I think he may have won the job for the future with him coming out to start this one. That may be an indication. I mean, he does have, he's got the leg speed. He's got the arm power as we just saw there. I think, could it show after that touchdown pass some more faith in throwing the ball? I mean, you know you get the ball off the Quran quite a bit, but have some faith throwing the football. So the defense, up. defense sets up the offense, and Pond will boot this one for a touchback. Concordia will be nailed back at their own 20-yard line to start this drive. Three offensive drives for Concordia. Two interceptions and a missed field goal. I'd say that's a good start. I would say that as well. The Saints will set this one up on their own 20. Mister takes a snap. He's going to give it to the left side. With some room in front of him, chopped down. Ball's out, but they'll call him down by contact. Would have fallen on it anyways. Montag on the carry. So he'll pick up six on first down.
Montauk once again to the left of Mister. Two seniors in that backfield. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he's got nowhere to go. Picks up a yard, but it's third down once again. Friars with another chance for a big stop. Set up either dangerous fourth down territory or force another punt. Third and three on the fourth offensive drive of the Saints. Just inside eight minutes in the second quarter. Nichols creeping off the left edge. And Mr. Keeps it. He's going to roll out with a lot of green in front of him. Out past the 40-yard line. A.J. Anderson with the first down. Well-designed play for Concordia on third down, and they convert. Ball spotted at the 41. The Saints split out two receivers to the near side. Mister in the shotgun. He's going to take the snap. Give it to Montag off the right side. Shifty with it past midfield. And he'll get the spot for the first down. Now Concordia moving quickly and jumping into the neutral zone with Skyler Harvey the junior. A free five from the Friars. It's alliteration. <laughs> Second offsides penalty and three drives for the Friars. Those penalties are going to have to not be as evident going on if the Friars want to continue to hang around. Concordia is a good team and you can't give them anything for free. Mister takes the snap. Play action fake. A screen pass. Converging and through two tackles. All the way past the 20 yard line. Cuts back at the 10. Pushed out of bounds just before the 5 yard line. Jalen Harkham. The Saints still moving with some tempo. Mister in the pistol. He'll give it straight up the middle and down to about the two yard line. Goes Julius Cornish. We've seen the Saints move with some tempo. They'll keep that up. They sub quickly, line back up on the ball. Curley's been tight to the goal line before. See if they can come out again, although tight package here. Straight under center, ball's out! Who fell on it? Looked like Concordia from up here. And it's third down. Oh my goodness, what a dangerous play that could have been. Lucky to fall on it. That wasn't the initial recovery, too. That ball was on the ground for a decent amount of time. It's not like he fell right back on it. They're trying to get the QB sneak to work, and timing play is just not on for that. It's tough to, tough to time that up in unison. So now they'll go back to the pistol. Mister with Montag right behind him. They're going to give it to him, and he's short. An interesting call coming, and I think I know what they're going to do. I bet they go for it. Concordia bring on, bringing on the heavy set. It's even switching up quarterbacks. No, they're going to kick. What? Oh, my goodness. They're on the half-yard line. They are going to kick. Does he they have don't know what's going on. It's a oh, direct Oh, my snap. gosh. They fake it. Did they get there? No, they didn't. 
The Friars come up big. They fooled me. They fooled AJ. They did not fool this Friars defense. Oh my gosh. A fourth big defensive stop. Huge defensive stop. Nobody under knew that was coming except the guys on the field. The coaching staff looked out of sorts. The sideline had no idea. They were confused. Concordia's kicker, I'm not sure if he was trying to play off the part, but he looked confused. Yeah, I'll tell you, Ryder Benz did a great job trying to sell that. And yelling to the sideline because there was no holder there, but what the holder was doing was standing under center ready to receive that snap. Now Curley needs to get out of their own end zone. We'll see if they just sneak it right forward. Anderson's going to line up straight under center. A stoppage pre-snap. And a false start. So half the distance to the goal proves to be about a and foot. If that. If that. It would, on the half yard line. Half half a yard. Half a yard's about a foot and a half, so three quarters of a foot. Which is nine inches. That ball spotted just about on that <coughs> excuse me, curly goal line. Scott Anderson's gonna get right under center. It's just gonna push forward. Uh oh. Uh oh. He got out. He got out. He even Barely. gained a yard on it. Is what they're claiming. Full well, progress. <laughs> looks like he's right about where he started. Honestly, if you if you can't get it out of here, you might either have to take a safety on the punt or just have Pond just get the ball and just boot it as high as he can without worrying about distance because Pond does not have his typical room behind him if the Friars can't get past the one-yard line. They Anderson's going to line up in the shotgun. Jack Athis is going to sprint out to the left. We'll see if they try a a quick screen, maybe to Albright on the right side. Trying to spread out the defense a little bit, you know, not Anderson loading up the box. Play action to Madison. He'll dangerously flip it to Jack Cool incomplete. Had Gavin Albright over there close to your screen. He was. He looked like he was breaking free, but Anderson had his eyes set on cool. Once again in the shotgun. A dangerous spot for this Friars offense. Anderson's going to take the snap, give it to Karan Madison. He got out of his own end zone. Still, still being moving. pushed. So that gives the Friars some breathing room. Which a four. May prove big. <laughs> we might have to invest in a cough button. to line up to punt this one away. Darren Hill lined up very shallow at about the 35-yard line, maybe anticipating Pond not being able to get everything on it. Now he'll scoot back. Just shy of midfield is where, where he'll stop. And Coach Womack wants a timeout, get things sorted out, and what could be not really what could be, what is a dangerous spot. Seven nothing Friars. Two thirty-eight left in the second quarter. Friars do receive 
the second half kick. Perhaps, maybe Pawn collects. I mean, do you have enough of them now? You think? I mean, think so. You might have enough. Pawn could also collect and try to sprint out to his left or right. See that a lot in college football with those punts. Snap is high. Pond does get it away. Fielded by Hill at midfield. He's going to sprint out to the right. Chased by Jack Athis. He's going to get a good return on it past the 30-yard line. So once again, Concordia with very good field position. But we've seen the Friars stand tall now four times. Even with Concordia starting in very good spots on multiple occasions. Backs against the wall again. Can they do it a fourth time? Keyshawn Mister in the pistol. Cam Gross lines up behind him. Actually, not gross, rather. Mister's going to keep this one on the right side. He looks like he's got the first down. That was Julius Cornish in the backfield. First and 10 from about the 17 yard line. Design keeper up the middle. Marcus Morris there. First got a hand on him. He only picks up about a yard. Second down. Clock ticking inside of two minutes. It's at 150. It's already Mr. Sixth carry on the day. 20 total carries for Concordia already. They're making it a priority to run this football. Mister's going to keep it again. Left side, green in front. Dragged down, just shy of the first down by Caden Travers. Third and about two. And a timeout taken by Concordia. They want to get this play right. A big spot with the third and about three looming. Still yet to scratch across anything on the scoreboard. One twenty four left in the second quarter. Friars out to a commanding start. Concordia looking to swipe back here. Keyshawn Mister back out there on third down. He'll line up in the shotgun. We'll see if they go back to that zone read. Looks like Keaton Travers might be the read man on the outside. Lined up off that right edge. Mister, he's going to design roll right with some space, but not anymore. Khalil Travers all over the field for the Friars. Flying in through that gap in the offensive line. <coughs> Saw that hole from up here. But out of nowhere came Khalil Travers flying in to blow that one up. And the Friars are going to take a timeout with Concordia leaving the offense out there. See what Concordia would do here. I don't see why they would not kick this football. At least get some points before the half. You have a you have a good chunk to make. It's fourth and seven.
I wouldn't say a chip shot field goal, but an easy one that a high school kicker usually makes. Be about 30. A fourth and seven. Keyshawn Mister has got Julius Cornish to his left. Trips out to the left. One split out to the far side. Fourth and seven. Mister takes a snap. He's going to scan right. He's going to test one on one coverage. That throw nowhere near inbounds. How many times will they try this Friars defense before they just either take their points or just get it away? Uh, almost, a, um, almost a no chance. Try to go in a one on one, but they must have forgot that's Amari Garner out there. That's why you make him that one guy out there in one-on-one -on -one coverage. You know he can get it done, and he did there. I mean, you got to just take your points there. Now Curly's got a chance. I mean, 53 seconds. You are back on your 14-yard line, but Karan can break off a big run with Dylan Fish is back there right now. Or Be maybe you find Athos again. Be interested to see if maybe they just try and run this one out, take their lead in the half, no costly turnovers. They'll run this one with Fish. Right side. No gain on that one. Clock will keep on ticking. And the Friars are going to be content to just leave it that way. You know, now I'm thinking about it. Pretty smart there. Don't do anything ridiculous. Can't. Don't want to make a costly turnover that gives them in the field goal range. Now Concordia doesn't seem to want to kick, but if you do give them the ball right around this part of the field, they could kick a field goal, make it four-point game going to the half. We could just be content with the shutout in the first half. Yeah, Friars not likely to try anything here. Probably have to take one more snap. And they will, and it'll be Scott Anderson just going down to a knee, giving himself up so he doesn't need to be touched. Clock is stopped for some reason. Now it's running. Now it runs. Who's running the clock, a play coach may say. So, the Friars, in what's been an interesting one, will take a lead in a, into the half. Five drives for Concordia by my count. Five stops, including two interceptions. AJ, what have you seen out of the squad so far? I mean, it's Evan, defense is right there. I mean, their backs against the wall on every drive. I believe one time the ball was not on their side of field to start a drive, and they just continued to be strong. And that last play by Amari Gardner really shows how the secondary has been hard, strong. And then the pass rush, I mean, they're getting to Mr. quite a bit and making him uncomfortable in the pocket. Yeah, this Friars offense hasn't done too much, really, but... The defense set them up well at about the 25-yard line for that one drive. Highlight of this game, Scott Anderson zinging that touchdown pass into Jack Athis after some good catch and run. At the end of the first half, the Friars lead. They will also receive the second half kick. It's 7-0 Friars going into the break. We'll see you on the other side.
back here, start of the second half. Friars up 7 0 and will receive the opening kickoff of the second half. A strong half for this Friars defense. Friars offense looks shaky. Had that one drive in which they were able to score off the turnover. But AJ, what are you looking to see out of the squad in the second half? I, n I need to see more of the run game. Back at it, what it was at Boys Lat against Boys Latin. I mean, Karan has not gotten into it yet. The offensive line, too many, too many Concordia pass rushers, and front seven in the backfield, all, like right away. We need the offensive line and Karan to step it up here, and get the offense going. Dylan Fish at the 10, a solid return after the 30-yard line. The Friars will set up from there. And as you just mentioned, I think getting Karan going is going to be key for the Friars to seal this one away. The Saints have had their chances, blew about five of them. All five offensive drives, they really had an opportunity. Besides the one where they were buried back deep in their own territory and through the interception. But even then, that's what turned this game around so far. And that's what gave Friars the points that they have. First and ten. Jack Athis split out to the far side. Along with Miguel Davis, the freshman tight end. Athis will go in motion. On the first play, they'll run it with Anderson and see swarmed. There but is. a face mask. Two flags come in. You could see that one from up here. And the Friars with a free 15 on the first play of the half. Interesting ref to call the flag from all the way the back judge throwing the flag. I mean, clear to everybody in this curly bowl that that was a face mask. And now grant them a free 15 yards on a play that was relatively blown up. Looked like A.J. Anderson, the guilty party. Something you've got to shy away from if you're Concordia is ridiculous penalties like that. You can't afford to give them free yards, especially on plays. I mean, you're stopping their offense well, but you are behind. You can't let them get the ball almost to midfield without having to do anything. Anderson with two men out. They'll send Jack Athis in motion. Snap is high. Anderson fields it. He's going to run to the right, and he's going to get stopped. Helmet to helmet, perhaps? No call there. He's going to lose this flag about two field. yards. Oh, is there? There's a flag on the field. <coughs> and it was. Uh, it's hold, hold. I never saw that one come up. A lot of times on those sprint out plays where everything's working outside, it's easy for those linemen to just get a hold of that jersey as the linemen try and slip away. So now the Friars will back themselves up. 10 yards. A tug of war penalties. They'll replay first down. However, a first and 20 now. Gavin Albright, the lone man to the near side. Karan Madison lines up right behind Anderson. Concordia showing Potential pressure, and they're going to bring it. A five-man rush. Anderson keeps it. He's going to chuck it over the middle. Incomplete to Jack Athis. I'm not sure if that was a designed a late flag. run. A very late flag. A legal man downfield on the offense. Concordia going to accept that. So I guess what I said was probably right where that wasn't supposed to be a passing play. Because the linemen were... Down past, past their one yard they have past the line of scrimmage. So they were probably assuming a run was coming and Anderson kind of just flung that one out. So now decline penalty. <coughs> oh, there you go. So it'll be second and 20 rather than first and 25. Both teams trying as much as they can to help out the other team so far this half. Anderson takes a snap, give the Madison up the middle. And he has had nothing going today, right back at the original line of scrimmage. 
Concordia sniffing Madison out relatively well. This probably isn't the situation for it here, but eventually Curley's going to need to take their shots and put the ball in the air because their running game is just not going to solve this one. They're going to play action fake this one to Madison. Bobbled by Albright. It's a little past the 40. Stays in bounds. He'll pick up about seven or eight, but nonetheless, a fourth and long still for the Friars. They'll punt it away with Chris Pond. We'll see if they can get plays like that more involved in the early downs. And we've seen Coach Womack willing to make those adjustments as the game goes on. We'll see if that's something that occurs. The adjustment might just might just be pass it, pass the football because no success running it with one of the best running backs in the league. Pond snap skips in, but it's a great punt spiraling. Fielded all the way back at the 10-yard line. He's going to stay along that right sideline. Still in bounds. A burst of speed past midfield. If he's still in, we'll see how far they spot him. Just kind of tight rope that sideline. And they'll mark him out right at the 39-yard line, it looks like, of Curley. I mean, why not? It would make, it would, it, this defense wouldn't play as well with pressure with the ball on Concordia's 20-yard line. So why not put it on our own 40? Seemed to work. The other five drives. They've done extremely well with their backs against the wall so far. Concordia set up well once again. First and ten from the 39-yard line. He'll take the snap, give it to the right side, and swallowed up for a loss of a yard. Looked like Isaiah Yates in there once again. He's been a great player on the edge for the Friars this year. So a two-sport athlete, both football and basketball, it's always an impressive feat for anybody. Mister in the shotgun, he's going to motion Harkum. Takes a snap. Curly's going to bring the blitz. The zone read. He's going to keep it off the right side, and he's going to step out of bounds, just shy of the 35-yard line, maybe right at it. They'll give him the 36. It'll be third and about seven. He'll pick up about three or four on that one. Actually, more like third and eight. Concordia moving quickly, somewhat. In the pistol, a lot of screaming and yelling occurring from field level. And it may have been that misalignment. Mister in the pistol. He's going to give it up the middle. Yates in there initially, but Tavon Anthony Turk takes him down at the 34-yard line, and this is almost inevitably four-down territory with a fourth and five looming. I mean, this is the place where you always go for it on fourth down, and Concordia's already done it three times. So it's almost a certain that they will go for it again as Mister stays on the field as Concordia's, Concordia's hurt. Can the Friars... Stand tall once again. Fourth and five from the 34. Mister peeking toward the sideline. It's Cornish right behind him in the pistol inside of eight minutes. Curly showing potential pressure, and they're going to bring it. He's going to keep it on the right side. Well executed for the first down. I was for sure Cornish had the football there. Mister with a great run of the option. As was that curly defense, but I think that that's something that you've got to see is a possibility on that play. We've seen Mister carry the ball in many big late down situations for Concordia. That one just slipped through the cracks for the Friars. And Concordia gets a fresh set of downs. <coughs> They'll give this one to Cornish. He'll surge up the middle past the 20. Picks up nine on first down. Second and one.
Back to the line quickly are the Saints. Montag right behind Mister. They'll give it to him. He's got the first down. Inside the 15, down to the 14. Friars will run Paul Warren on. Harvey will come off for a breather. Two split out to the near side for Concordia. They'll give it to Montag, up the middle, and he stopped for no gain. This curly run defense has been very solid today. Saints, though, have broke off some larger runs, which have at times hurt the Friars. Mr. actually in the run game is the, the quarterback is the one you have to worry about the most. I mean, he has broken off the biggest runs, 30-yard run earlier, and then a couple of 15-yard gainers. There He's he is. going to keep this one on the zone read. Surges past the five. They are going to, looks like, give him the first down, and they will. What's new now? Curly backs against the wall. Goal to go. For the fourth time this game, Concordia's got goal to go. But Mister in the shotgun. He's going to keep this one on the right side. Closing in quickly and dragging him down at the three-yard line. Some good pursuit by Jeff Fortune. Second and goal from about the three or four yard line, maybe right in between of both. Five minutes, 30 seconds left in the third quarter of a tight matchup. It's gonna be a direct snap. Goes right to him, nearly stumbles, but pushes in to the end zone for the touchdown. Cam Gross kept that one out of the Wildcat formation, direct snap. We've seen the Friars do that a good bit this year. And now, looks like they're going to keep the offense out there in a strange formation. Go for two. I mean, the way you've been stopping Curly's offense, if you go for two here and get it, it might, I mean, it's the third quarter, but. He'll take the snap. He'll fake it. What, what am I watching? You know, that reminded me. You know what that reminded me of? The Colts. Uh, that, Colts that Colts Patriots primetime fake whatever that was just terrible. I mean, what? Why would. <laughs> I'm bamboozled. If you don't know what I'm referencing, just search up Colts fail fake punt and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And that looked very similar. Like very similar. If you, if you Including the loss of multiple yards. Yeah, but if you listen to, you know, Colts, the Colts players' interviews after that, they were just trying to draw the Patriots off sides on that and play. I yeah, mean, you're not trying to draw someone yeah. off sides on a two-point conversion. Confused. Like, I mean, I guess maybe if you're trying to get a pass out wide to where the rest of your linemen were, but there was no receiver lined up over there. That has to be potentially the worst play call I've ever seen while calling a game. And it's big because the Friars still hold a lead. It'll be interesting to see if the Friars score one, see if they go for two and try to make it a two-possession game. A short kick here, Dylan Fish will take it at the 15-yard line with a head of steam. He'll get out past the 25 and get pushed back from there. Forward progress will get him about the 26 or 27. They'll spot it at the 26. Let's see if Kuran can get going here. Need to get it. He's got he's got eight carries for 17 yards only. That's a little bit less than two yards a carry. This Concordia defense stopping him. 
Anderson takes a snap, play action. He'll throw the screen to Michael Brown. He is swallowed up and still on his feet, but they're going to stop progress. Lost two. Actually, they'll stop it a little bit earlier than we previously assumed. It'll only be a loss of one, but a loss nonetheless. Anderson in the shotgun. Karan Madison to his left. He'll shift to his right. Anderson takes the snap. It's going to be play action. Willer closing in. Anderson's going to step up and shovel it out. Dangerously caught at the 30-yard line. They'll pick up about five yards. Richard Ford on the reception. <coughs> Lucky to get really anything out of that. Also a dangerous spot with Anderson running away from those defenders chasing behind. That's something you always have to watch out for. A third and six. Potentially a big play. Potentially some running room there for Anderson. I mean probably would have got about the same as when the uh, pass was completed for, but takes away the risk of the dangerous like flip pass. Saints showing potential blitz. Now they'll back out of it. They'll show once again. And they're only going to rush four. Anderson steps up in the pocket with some room in front of him. He's oh, got yeah. the first down and more. Spin move at the 45 all the way down. To the 48-yard line of the Friars. First down, Scott Anderson. Well, Scott Anderson, what you know about running room? He just got it there. Takes off, looking for somebody downfield. Finds the opening, knows exactly in that internal clock when to take off. Huge pickup there. Anderson's going to line up in the pistol. They'll send Ford in motion. They'll give it to Karan Madison, looking to get him going. He's only got two yards here. It'll be second and eight. Madison just nine for 19 on the day. It's very different than what we usually see out of him. This one, a big time defensive matchup. Anderson takes a snap, throws over the middle to Ford. Ford progress will stop him about two yards short of the, f short of the first down. It'll be third and two after the pickup of six. So Ford's second catch of this drive. Coach Womack and the coaching staff showing some more enthusiasm about throwing the football. Exciting. Uh. This is most likely Karan Madison range. Just two yards to get. I mean, I know he has been struggling, but you can't stop Karan for two yards. Oh, but you can stop him for seven after the false start. Friars will move back five. No complaints about it whatsoever. A costly penalty. Now I'd air it out. I would, the way you've been not been able to move the football running, you know, see if you can get a guy open downfield. If not, Anderson can use his legs to get maybe five or six and then get back into Madison range. Yeah, like you said, you always have the run game within the pass game with Anderson. You can always step up through the pocket, pick up yards when needed. We've seen it earlier this drive. Now another third down chance for the Friars, looking to stay on the field and stay in control of this one. Both Madison and Jack Cool lined up in the backfield. Mm -hmm. 
Anderson will take the snap. He'll keep it himself past midfield, and he picks up about two yards. Now what do you do here? So you're looking at about a fourth and five, and Chris Pond is going to run out on this one. They'll punt it away. We'll see if they let the quarter I'd run let the off. Qu I let the quarter run out and think about this for a second. You've got the football on your side of the field for only the second time today. First time was on an interception. So this is the first time your offense has been able to move the football to your side of the field. It's going to be the end of the quarter before they punt it. No, no, it's not. Oh, my goodness. Bad miss by the refs. Really bad. I mean, I that clock was at zero for about two seconds. I believe you guys could see the clock in that frame. I mean, that that was on zero for quite a bit, some time. And now I'm telling... Looks like now they might be sending it back. Refs were pointing back yeah. toward the direction of the original line of scrimmage. Interesting. Looks like the defense is out in the huddle for the Friars, so I guess they'll keep it there. Unless it was a good, it was a good punt, so no complaints yeah. there. They're moving it back toward midfield. They're well, it's because they're flipping the field, field. field. Yeah, at the end of the quarter. Unless they stop right about now, no, they do they, not. No, they keep walking. So the play will stand, and the punt will still exist. A big fourth quarter to come for both teams. Concordia still trails by a point. Over 125 on right now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nick Polinski with AJ Polcary. We've brought you through a great one so far. Mister will open up the quarter in the shotgun. They'll give it right side. He'll pick up just about what needed for the first down. They'll give him the spot. Actually, the far side ref gave him probably about a yard more than he actually gained on that one. But a first down nonetheless. Gain of about 11. Coach defense has come up strong. What, once again, Montag will check in for Julius Cornish. We've seen a committee of running backs for the Saints today, and they're all very good. This one to Montag. Not a very good run there, just the yard. Zion Harris, one of the guys in there to finish that one off. Now an injury for Concordia. It is Montag, it looks like. It's 10 carries for 33 yards on the day for him. One more touch than his fellow running back, Cornish. Cornish gets one more touch as Concordia's got three guys in double digit rushing attempts really making it a focus to run the football. Absolutely. And Curley's done a good job with the runs up the middle. They just had a bit of trouble containing Keyshawn Mister with his own design keepers. He's quick on his feet. Almost reminds me of a Lamar Jackson type. We've seen him go out of that empty set run a few times, keeping it on his own read. He's done a very good job running the football. He's 12 for 74 by AJ's unofficial stats. They're quite official. Are they? I mean. Max preps on the last game against Boys Latin. Max preps only had me off by three yards for Karan. I had 153, they had 150. It's pretty good. I mean Not official though. I mean, 
Max, Max Preps is as official as the guy running the clock who had zeros on it for six seconds before the play was snapped. Second and nine, Mr. Keeps up the middle. Nothing doing. Dragged backwards, Marcus Morris, one of the guys in there, and it's third down. Morris has been a big part, yet last game against Boys Latin, as well as this game, as well as this game for the run defense up the middle to strong nose tackle. They'll give him about two yards after forward progress. So it's third and about seven. A big spot. Two receivers split out to the far side, one to the near. They're gonna give it to Cornish. Left side, he's got the first down and he's got more to it. Past the 40, a late flag comes in. We'll check it. Oh, a holding penalty would kill Concordia there. Great run there by Cornish, but. The, the Curly coach is walking all the way to midfield. I think there might have been an injury, oh, and that's what it down. was. Malachi Nichols. That's the, I think that was the reason he came out in the first place. Holding on the offense. And that's going to send Concordia back after a strong run. Who is that down? Malachi Nichols, I believe it was. One of the big seniors in the secondary. He's also taking some offensive snaps as well. Nichols with a big interception earlier in the game. You're hoping it's just a cramp, which seems like they're stretching it out for it to be a cramp. And it looks like he started to kind of jog back over, then all of a sudden, one of the legs just kind of gave out on him. And that looks like that's most likely what it was. <coughs> Vinny Rose, the magic water boy coming out, help him, help him get some water. And as you said, a hold called on the play. That is big. So I believe the way that's ruled is half the, or excuse me, not half the distance. I think it's the yardage back from the spot of the foul when they repeat the down. So actually they did gain two yards on it, but it is third down still, which is the major, major key in that. Still third down, as you said, third and four. Amari Gardner on an island off the right side. Mister's going to keep it. Yates closing in. Fortune gets pushed past midfield. And Mister picks up the first down. Mr. and Fortune went one on, one on one right at midfield. Keyshawn Mr. able to power through. Ball spotted at the 47 yard line. First play here, Mr. left side. Yates closes in along with others to shut that one down. Elijah Anderson also there on the stop. First play of the new set of downs goes for just a yard. It'll be second and nine from the 46. Cornish will go in motion. They'll fake it to him. Mister's going to keep it again. And it looks like he's chopped down with first down yardage as Mr. picks up 10. Now just unofficially eight yards shy of the century mark. Anytime I'll give, I give an AJ Kep stat, I'll, stat I'll, uh, I'll preface it with uh, potentially or something along that line. They're gonna swing this one out to Cornish. Hit hard by Yates for just a yard or two. That one officially just a gain of a yard. Concordia's come out with the same set five times in a row with the running back moving into motion. 
Misters kept it four of the times, but threw it in the fifth last time. He's run straight away though. They'll give this one up the middle, spinning out of a tackle, and for the first down. Justin Harvey, another running back, receiving a carry today. The Saints will move relatively quickly to, quickly to the line. Within eight minutes, they're going to give this one to Montag. Stood up at the 20 yard line. He picks up about five yards. If you're the Friars, hopefully this is their last set of downs. You give them a chance to have this drive. Either set up a long field goal or a fourth down situation. Just want to keep this one within, hopefully, a field goal. Mister keeps it rolling right, completing for the first down to the 11-yard line. A.J. Anderson, the junior tight end. And now an injury timeout for Concordia. said it many times before, Curley's defense backs against the wall yet again. This one on their own doing. But nonetheless, seeing if they can come up with it. Watch Khalil Travers again. He's been hawking the middle of the field the entire game. And as the field gets shorter, less options for Mr. to go, th go to. I mean, I don't see any reason why Concordia would not just continue to run the football, though. Injury looks like it's Daniel Kausler, senior O-lineman. No cart needed, off on his own strength, always a good sight. Seven fourteen left in this fourth quarter. Mister in the pistol. Cornish right behind him. He'll take the snap. Give his to Cornish. A hole on the left side. And Cornish is into the end zone. Touchdown. And Concordia takes the lead. A wide open hole. I mean, Nick, you could have ran through that one. And Cornish takes it all the way to the house. Let's see if Concordia. Concordia's got to go for two. Make it a full touchdown possession game. They've shown no faith in their kicker. As Mister comes off the field, though. Excited to see what they bring out of the bag here. Um, looks like it may be potentially a direct snap. Gross is there. That's what they did on the. That's what they did on the touchdown. The only touchdown play earlier in the game. It's going to be Cam Gross. He's going to keep it, and he's absolutely stuffed. So the conversion no good. Friars just need their six. But maybe a challenge the way things have been going. Seven oh three remaining. Concordia holding a five point lead. <laughs> Defensive masterpiece from both teams. Dog fight all around. The 
Saints found their groove in the run game last drive. Let's see if the Friars try and find their own groove on this one. Fish will field this one six yard line. He'll take it straight up the middle with some blocks in front down to the 25. <coughs> Inside of seven minutes, 6.56 left. Friars looking to mount a touchdown drive. Four receivers out wide. Anderson will drop back, throw over the middle. Dangerous. Miguel Davis never really got his head turned around. Incomplete. Anderson had time there. The pass rush was not to him yet. Maybe he had it felt like he needed to rush it. Anderson sends Athis in motion. They fake it to him, now they'll swing it out to Athis. A wall built in front of him by Concordia defenders. A flag will come in. No immediate block necessarily in that area. We'll see what the call is. It is an offensive hold. So the one block out there was not legal. I believe Concordia was going to decline this. Make it third and ten. There was no gain on that play. Maybe a gain of one. No, they'll back him up, it looks like. Wow. Far side referee was pointing backward as if they wanted to enforce the penalty. And it will be a replay of second down. Second and 20. And honestly, I think the way this curly offense has been moving, that's the right decision. Don't give them one chance to get 10. Give them two chances to get 20. Because the chances chance that they get 10 yards on back-to-back -back plays is not very high in my opinion. Anderson, he's going to drop back. He's going to look deep now. Step up. Pocket collapsing. Ball's out. Looks like the Friars did fall on it. They did. And now the offensive line's got to find a way to get let to Anderson get comfortable in the pocket. I mean, under distress most of the game when he drops back to pass. I mean, he had a, a hole, but he couldn't. Not enough to get through it. Third and a mile. Ball spotted <coughs> at the 14. Line to gain the 35. So a third and 21. Trips out left. I'd like to see if they just take a shot on the right side. Looks like Gavin Albright. Maybe just throw it up in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Anderson's going to take the snap. He's going to look that way. Going for Albright. He makes the catch. He's shy of the first down. Go for it. You got to go for it. I would agree. Just need three yards. With the way Concordia has been able to run the football, you don't know if you're going to get the ball back. You have to go for it. That's exactly what they're going to do as Anderson comes back on the field, sends Karan with him. Maybe that's what they needed the entire game. Needing the 35. Ball is at the 32. Fourth and three. It'll be Karan Madison next to Scott Anderson. And a timeout will be taken by the Friars. I tend to maybe send trips outright. Try to spread out this Concordia front seven just a little bit. And let Karan do his work.
A big spot could potentially define the game. By the way, great hands by Albright there on that one. Caught it through the contact, held onto it, and that's what set up this fourth and short. Because <laughs> before that, you were sure to punt this one away. Fourth and three. Anderson in the shotgun with Karan Madison to his left. Give it to Madison. Let him cook. Anderson takes a snap. He's going to pass it. He's going to go over the middle. Dropped by Michael Brown. He had him. He had the space. Brown found the hole in the defense but couldn't bring it in. Anderson put it right to him. Tough way to end that drive for the Friars. Now the Friars need to stop to stay in this one. <laughs> A broken play. Back is Travers and he trips him up. Behind the line of scrimmage, he's gonna lose about five or six yards. They'll mark him down five behind. It'll be second and 15. Started with a broken play in the backfield. The running back and the quarterback went different ways for the handoff attempt. Four minutes, five seconds left in this fourth quarter. Friars are going to need a touchdown at some point to stay in this one. Montag in motion. Cornish right behind Mister. Mister is going to keep it right side down past the 30 so he'll get his yardage back and a little bit more. Now faced with a third and about five. The sophomore Balin Bouts bit on the option play. Gave Mister wide open space to the right to run. Third and six? Third and six now. Scoreboard says six. My count says seven. It'll be Mister with the ball spotted at the 29 yard line on the right hash. Trips out to the left. We'll see if Mister looks that way. If it's a pass, which it may not be. Time now, Concordia. They don't know what they want to do. Trying to run down as much clock as you can there and take the timeout to avoid the delay game. I'm honestly still not sure how that works here. Because that, there's a pass, or rather off to the side by the track of the south end zone and the north end zone. You have a play clock that just sits at 40 the whole time. Yeah, play clock never changes. Um, the only time I've ever seen that work is in lacrosse with a shot clock football in my four years here. I don't think it's ever actually ran. But it's nice to have it. Know that you have 40 seconds to snap the ball. For those who didn't know. So a big third down. Saints may have a chance to put the game away. If you're the Friars, you can't let up another first down. That could end the game. Friars have three timeouts, but the way Concordia's been able to run the football, you can just milk that clock. This may be a fourth down situation either way, because Curley's essentially in position they would be just a few yards past if Concordia were to boot a touchback on the punt. Maybe you try and punt it 
Just kick it straight up. They'll run this one. Actually, no, Mr. Keeps. Left side, not much in front of him, and he's dragged down by Caden Travers. He'll lose about a yard. And a timeout called by the Friars. Trying to conserve as much of this clock as possible. And of course, with the college rules, you don't always need to have those timeouts on those last offensive drives. It's better to save, his, save that 40 seconds here than have it next drive because those first downs do stop the clock. They do stop the clock. Let's see what this offense could do. You did find that passing game was working. I mean, Al Albright, first catch of the day, first even target of the day worked out for him and you did have Michael Brown open in space I'm sure he won't fail to bring it in a second time if he can continue to get open but what Concordia will do here is the question it's, it's they will punt it'll be Ryder Benz and of course the Friars have to make sure they do not commit any sort of roughing or running into penalty to tack on some extra yardage and potentially a first down based on what category that foul Watch is Khalil placed Travers, in. top of your screen. And The clock's not running, so I don't know why they don't just put it away. There's a play clock being counted by the back judge, and it's a delay game. Give them a little bit more space. Guess it was all part of the plan, but why not just have one of you guys jump early and just waste less of our time? Well, maybe maybe Curly jumps early, then you get it. get Curly a jump early, end up making it a fourth and three, and then probably go for it. Fair point. You mentioned Caden Travers, closest rusher on the edge. Kane but Travers. now they'll bring out the offense. Now that it's, now that they just lost five yards, now they'll go for it. An what? Another strange coaching move from these Concordia. And they'll snap it and run it. He's got a convoy out in front, but he is still on his feet, but doesn't have the first down. What do we? What do we? That that. What are we witnessing? The ref is yelling at the coaches, but the play has ended. Um, Curly's going to get the ball. That would have been a first down had they not taken the <laughs> delay of game penalty. I'm slightly confused. Now Malachi Nichols and. Amari Gardner, two cornerbacks, are on the field for offense. Guess now the thought is put all the athleticism you can out there with just 234 left. We see Nichols take some snaps as a receiver, not Gardner. Nichols and Gardner closest to your screen. Anderson in the shotgun with Karan Madison right to his right. He takes a snap. He's going to drop back the pass. Rushed off the edge. Steps up. And he's sacked. Anderson's going to need to get rid of it. Because this pocket is clo closing very quickly. This offensive line really showing its struggles in the second half. Giving Anderson just no time in the pocket. Fortunately, not too much of a loss. Only about three or four yards back. So second and 14. Anderson. Takes this now. Pocket collapsing again. Steps up and Ernest Willer gets to him this time. Losing another two yards. The offensive line is getting absolutely pushed around. Nothing Anderson can do. I mean, he's just getting attacked. Getting no time to throw the football. And now he's worried about the rush. And he's going to have to he's gonna have to make a bad throw. He's not going to force him to make a bad throw. Third and 16. Obviously, you have two downs to get the yardage. Friars taking their time in the huddle. They're going to have to quicken up. I assume they'll sprint out of the huddle. They set quickly. 
Amari Gardner, the lone man out to the near side. We'll see if they try one-on-one -on -one with him. Anderson takes a snap. He's going to look that way. Wind up to Amari Gardner. A duck. And it's incomplete. Gardner knows how to play some corner, and that's exactly what he did. I think I can see the guy in the tree over there that shot down that duck midair as it wobbled back down to the earth's surface. Dar Darian Hill camped under it like a punt. Garner knocks it away, and now it's fourth down, and I gotta air it out again. Concordia knows that they're gonna throw the football, sending out the a Friars lot of DBs. On their final breath. It'll be 4th and 16, line to gain, the 36 of their own. Gardner once again one-on-one. -on -one. Friars O-line needs to give him some time here. Anderson will take the snap. He's got some time, now packing collapses. He rolls left, he's gonna be able to wind up and throw one. Heaves it way down, feared for Malachi Nichols. Flag is down! There is a flag down! There is a flag down. I don't think they let Nichols get back to the ball. Concordia celebrating half of them, the other half knowing exactly what went wrong. And it's a pass interference call! And a first down for the Friars. 15 yards gifted on a ball that might have been able to be caught by Nichols if he wasn't held, but not, I mean, there was three Concordia guys and just Malachi. You so a big break will bring the, bring the Friars all the way out. You cannot let that happen if you're Concordia. I believe, like you said, it is a 15-yard penalty, so believe the spot will be the 35, but they have to walk it back to the original spot first. <laughs> If only it was the NFL. Smile a foul. We would have the ball on our side of the field. Though, fresh set of downs allows Curly to do a lot more. Opens the playbook options. They're saying it's still fourth down. Oh, is that how it works here? I actually didn't know that. It was... Was it not 4th and 14? And a false start. A killer for the Friars at now 4th and 6. Looked like it was one of those false start everyone but the centers. Because it seemed like the entire line moved, Quran moved. The center did not budge. Remember what I said about the playbook options being open? Scratch that. Out the window. Gonna have to put it in the air here. A fourth and six. Last chance for Curly. Anderson takes a snap. They send the blitz. Anderson steps up, still on his feet. Shucks this one. Incomplete. It doesn't matter. He had Karan Madison wide open in the left flat, chose not to take it. Karan visibly upset back on the bench of the home sideline. And that'll do it. I'm going to do some extensive research on the pass interference rule in high school football because even if it wasn't an automatic first down, should it not have been replay third down? Oh, it was fourth down. It was fourth it down. Was fourth it was down. Re so replay yeah, fourth down. It was down. replay down. But That's strange. I, I, very, I, thought, I thought it was fourth and 14 as well, but I guess it was fourth and 16. I think it was fourth and 16. Concordia will take this one, kneel it to the ground. 
one more of those will do it. A tough one here for Curly. I mean, you, they were in the game the entire time. The defense held strong up until the last two drives. They just got tired and worn out from this Concordia offense. And the curling run game just didn't get going. That was the issue. The offensive line struggles. And Concordia's pass rush and front seven really showed. Karan Madison really wasn't able to get it going on the ground today. The Friars offense just were unable to match the energy of the Saints defense today. Just those seven points on the about the 25 yard line they started on and really just a tough day for the Friars offense. Final score 12 to 7 Concordia takes it. AJ what would you see out of the team in general today? Uh, so I, I really like the defense especially in the first half I mean if they if if they had more time to rest when the offense had the football I mean I don't think the touchdowns would have been scored but they also were very alert to what Concordia was trying to do I mean a couple of trick plays from Concordia the only person they were not able to stop was Mr. on the ground. In the air, they were doing perfectly fine, but on the ground was a struggle to stop him. But relatively good job from the defense. The offense just, once again, the offensive line and the run game just could not get going. Yeah, it felt like after that first half, you knew that Concordia was going to get their opportunities. They had him in the second half. They had him in the first half, really, didn't catch him in. But it's a team as good as this, they're going to eventually take advantage of those opportunities you give them and they did a better job though not perfect in the second half able to scratch off 12 points and I think this one really falls on that curly offense offense unable to score a single point in that second half the one touchdown they did score they were gift wrapped with good field position so that will surely be something to look over before they move on to their next match their next home match will be here against Mount Carmel on homecoming. Obviously a big day coming for the Friars, especially the seniors. For AJ, Pol for AJ Polkary, I'm Nick Polinski. Your final score from Archbishop Curley High School in Baltimore, Maryland.